Hey guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. This is gonna be my third walk in the advent of the 2026 Winter Olympics. We're still a long way from Milano Cortina, but I did promise to make updates as we move along and to share whatever happens to my life as a skater and whatever I go through in my preparations for, for the Winter Olympics, becoming a better athlete, becoming a better skater, and also qualifying for the games and at the end of it going there. I'm really happy to see more and more of you people on thoroughskating.com. Whether you're just a member or a premium subscriber, it means a lot to me. It does mean that I can make more content like this because um, yeah, that's what I live from. So by subscribing there, paying $10 a month or 10 euros a month, it does um, allow me to make more videos. This video is gonna be partly here on YouTube and partly on Thorpe Skating because I really wanna drive more of you on there. It is just a really nice platform. I work with the people behind that platform to develop it and it allows me to put everything in one place. So articles and ask me anything sessions, polls, um, podcasts, and of course a ton of videos on skating technique and my life just like this vlog. So if you are interested in getting better at skating and getting some more in-depth content on technique, then I suggest you go to Tharp Skating and have a look. If you're already on Tharp Skating, then thanks for watching. Um, as usual, I'm just gonna go through the things I've been doing. Um, in this vlog, it's gonna be a little extra exciting, I think, because I am now back on the ice, skating on the ice again. So I'll talk a lot about that. And then at the end of it, um, I'm gonna talk a little more about um, how I think you should warm up, how I warm up and, uh, and how I cool down before and after races and training sessions. I think warm up is, is key to get better. Skating won't make you a better skater, but it'll give you some tools and just allow you to improve as a skater. So, and honestly, I've also seen a lot of people do that in in inadequate ways that are not necessarily beneficial. So I'll try and give my point of view on that and hopefully that can help you guys out. Still in Utah for another 10 days before I'm heading back to Denmark. It's going to be our first recovery week of the ice season. So I'll take that opportunity to go back to Denmark. That'll be really nice. I'll spend my birthday there. I will also celebrate my sister's birthday. Having some family time is it's going to be super cool. I'll only be in Denmark for three or four days because it's a busy schedule. Training takes a lot of time. Um, that's rough, but also that's a choice I made. And then I will go do a short content production with Rollerblade, sponsor of mine. Uh, somewhere in the south of Europe, haven't really found out where uh, yet or when specifically, but uh, I have a meeting about that in a little bit. So excited about that. I, I really enjoy working with these people. It's a professional brand and you probably know that already that I'm a big fan of inline skating. So that'll be fun. And then heading back to Utah, back on the ice, back preparing for the, the inline season. Um, Denmark is always going to be a lot of meetings. It's half fun, half work. Uh, not that the work is not fun. I'm going to meet up with a company called Soles that make customized insoles for basically any footwear. Um, came across them because they were also invited to be key speakers at a sports tech festival. And, um, and that's a really interesting concept. Like things I, despite really caring about my performance, I never thought about how we should probably have different soles depending on where we want to put pressure. If we're running, if we're walking, if we're biking, if we're doing side, sideways dryline exercises. So I'm going to meet up with them and, and see what that's all about. They make 3D printed soles. So that's going to be interesting. I'll let you know how that goes. Um, meeting up with Aerofit. Y'all know I've been doing a ton. I got it here. A ton of long training for a lot of years. I do really believe this to be one of the things that has helped me out a lot as an athlete and uh, meeting up with them to just talk with the smart people from in there and maybe create some videos on, on why this actually works. Um, there's a discount code in, uh, in all the descriptions, I think, of my YouTube videos. So there'll be one here as well if this is 
something you want to start doing. I made some videos. It does really help a ton. Um, currently making one where I stopped in the off season and then started training again for 30 days and uh, just tracking the progress, um, how much you can actually improve by using this for seven minutes per day. So uh, that one's interesting, editing it right now and it'll go up on the YouTube channel. Um, so I'll also do that when I'm in Denmark, I'll meet up with the guys from Sycom. Um, it's, a, it's a company that sells everything you need for cycling, go for a social ride with them. Uh, they're really nice people as well. So I'll, I'll try to do as much as I can in the few days that I have there. But um, what I've been up to lately is that we've been skating on the ice. It is new to me to be on ice this early. I don't know if it's something I would even recommend, which is also why I'm basically doing nothing on the ice. I'm on the ice twice a week and um, it's been dry line most of it. So dry line on the ice, different drills, constraints. So not as much actual skating. If you've seen any of my training plans, you would probably know that I'm a big fan of doing other things than just skating straight forward and turning left. I, I really think key to be a good skater is to be comfortable on your skates, to, to be you know at one with your blades or wheels so that you can apply pressure freely and that you can just be more natural in your skates. Um, and right now there's no competitions in the near future, not before. It's like the important ones in November. So I've just been training hard on the bike and running weightlifting and then take, making the most out of having the ice here. And then, yeah, working on these skills, we're really talking like agility, backwards, forwards, one leg, up, downs as you're gliding, um, different constraints with only taking a certain number of steps each turn or each straightaway. Um, things like that that make you a little uncomfortable but then make you better at skating and then ultimately a little more comfortable later on which is fun it's nice it's different and the season is super long it goes until march 10th where we have the world's all-round championship so it's it's a long season and it shouldn't get boring i mean i love skating but it is important to have some variety in the workouts so try and work at that and then later of course i'll, I'll add speed i'll add laps and and get get good at actual skating again. Um, however, it's, it felt really good on the ice. I think because I did so much short track, had a few of those sessions where I did actually skate and and even one of them where I worked a bit of my race pace 5K and uh, I feel good. Um, so that's that's nice. It does pay off to, to do technical training. That was the whole goal of the summer to see if I could chub off some of the aerobic training but still have the same level. And then building strength and technique, which I, I did. I'm stronger than ever and uh, feeling like I guess get technically better than before. So that's a really good start. And um, but like I said, it's an early season, so it's just, you know, staying in there, being in the zone, and, and hopefully it'll work out. Utah has been hot, damn. It's been about 40 degrees Celsius plus 100 Fahrenheit for many weeks, which is annoying because we bike a lot. Um, meaning there's been days, the earliest I've woken up to get on the bike was 4.40, simply because it gets too hot. Um, this Monday I had a seven hour ride and I had to start at, what was it, 5.15, just to be able to do before it gets too warm. Um, so that's been pretty rough, but it's all about adaptation, I guess. It's a little bit of a self-enforced jet lag, um, but it is definitely worth it instead of dealing with temperatures. So, yeah, I mentioned this in my podcast. You can find all my podcasts on thoroughupskating.com as well. Um, most of them are free. Uh, you don't have to subscribe. Um, most of my content on there is actually free. So it's only really for the people that want to get better at skating and want more specific insights and exercises and technical advice that um, that can, can do the premium subscription. There will be a lot more content, but there's both options. Um, in those podcasts, I, I talked a bit about ketones. I, uh, I'm trying out ketone supplementation and um, teamed up with the brand HVMN. It is the biggest brand there is in ketones. They are pretty far ahead, I think. And, um, and obviously, they, like, the science is pretty sound that it does help for aerobic efforts, aerobic performances. But um, there's also a lot of science lately that have shown it to have a huge impact on recovery and even in sprints, uh, repeated sprints, which is pretty much what you do in a mass start. It's definitely what you do in inline skating and recovery is, you know, the limiting factor uh, to how hard we can train. 
So um, testing this, been on it for three, four days. I need a little more data before I can share anything, before I feel comfortable sharing anything. Um, but uh, I'm pretty positive about it. So um, that's exciting. Stay tuned for that. This from now on, we're going to hop on to throw up skating and talk about warm up, cool down, how you can improve that. Um, what I believe to be the most important things, how much you should warm up. Uh, it can also take some energy. So that's going to be in throw up skating. Really appreciate if you jump on there. If not, thanks for watching this video. Um, I'll try and keep it up, keep these locks up. See you next time.